And we are back with another episode of Beyond the Track. Huge shout out to Cooper Tires. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this series. It's been so much fun so far. If you haven't been able to check out one of the episodes, make sure you go to the YouTube channel. Look up Beyond the Track for Supercross Live. You can catch all the episodes we've done so far. Uh, today's is kind of like a part two in a way. It's part one with Martin Davlos, but part two with the team. We talked to Dakota Tedder a couple of weeks back. So I already got some insights and things I want to bring up today. It'll be pretty fun. Uh, first off, Martin, how are you, man? How's everything going back there? Hey, Daniel. Everything is going really good. Um, obviously, uh, for me, you know, with the COVID and, and uh, after Salt Lake City, uh, for me, it was just to take a little bit of time off. Um, you know, spend the summer with my wife and my, my son, you know, enjoy him. Um, really, you know, I think the past couple of years for me, it's been, you know, um, you know, get ready for the summer outdoors. You know, there's been a couple of uh, seasons that, that I've been hurt, but this is the first year in my long career, you know, that I've decided to, you know, out of my, you know, out of my own wit, uh, you know, just decided to take, completely the summer off so it, it felt good you know it was good for my body to really um you know just kick back and enjoy a little bit hey you know what i like right now just I, I get a hard time from everybody all the time they say hey you're doing all these shows everybody's got this thing behind them with all their trophies and stuff i'm so stoked that you have nothing behind you because for once it'll be equal we'll both get hit on this because i keep all my trophies in the closet so uh, yeah, <laughs> I just want to say I'm stoked that you you're looking like me today, and I don't have to take the hit on this one. I'm I'm a pretty simple man, to be honest with you. <laughs> we do have our office, and we have a, a couple pictures and some trophies there, but it's a mess right now, and it's literally right next to the baby's room. So I didn't want to bother into that, and I'm just sitting here in the um, in our you know kitchen kind of um, side table. So it, this will work. <laughs> And it's better. It's you and me. It's you and me. We don't got to worry about all of our accomplishments, right? We got a bunch. I minor. I don't have as many, but I got a couple. I'll keep them over the side. It'll just you and me today. But uh, hey, so I had a good time with Dakota a couple weeks ago and uh, talked a lot about you. Obviously, it was a good year for you. 450 debut year. And I just got to say, I, you've gotten a hard time from people in the past about being in the 250 class a long time. And everyone said, oh, when he gets to the 450, he's going to be great. Dude, you were awesome this year, but I think you knew this was coming, and I think you've wanted this for a long time. I, I've heard you in interviews say you wanted to make this move, and I know it's hard in the offseason when offers come in, but are you happy with the move you made? And, and now that it's finally happening, you're like, yeah, I'm a 450 guy, and not only that, but I'm a good one. Yeah, I mean, you know, this sport is brutal. I've, you know, a lot of people have given me a lot of crap for, for staying on the 250, but we're all trying to make a living out of it and enjoy what we do, you know, and, um, you know, I've, I've, I've came here to America as a nobody and it's taken me a long time to climb the ladder. I've done it by myself, you know, um, you know, I came here when I was 15 and, you know, I just, it was me against the world and, you know, I just, I really fought it and it really bothered me, I would say at the beginning of my, my career but then at the end you know I just I really I really didn't care what people thought because I was doing this for myself nobody else but for myself and I was trying to make a living out of this you know and uh, I love this sport so much that it was either I would retire or I continue my my career on the 250 class and you know still have um, a, a chance to possibly you know, win a championship, win races, you know, and make a name out of, out of myself. So, you know, I, I, I stuck to my plan. I stuck to what I believed and uh, trust me, I've been wanting to move to the 450 class. Um, you know, when I was with Brockstar Husqvarna, I, you know, they gave me the opportunity to do the outdoor series that one, one season and it went great. You know, we accomplished two podiums that for me was awesome. And, um, you know, I thought that year was going to be, you know, a, an, an opening to start my 450 career, but, you know, it didn't happen that, you know, they hired somebody else and uh, they wanted it. They wanted to keep me on the 250. And I was like, I just don't want to do it anymore, you know, but then, you know, nothing, I, I had no opportunity to move to the 450. So long story short, I just continue. I signed with Mitch and, uh, you know, it got to the point where obviously we got to Vegas. I think it was my last year of the 250 and Mitch came to me and he's like, Hey Marty, we could, 
you know, sit Vegas and have you for the next year. Um, you know, you'll have us, you know, backing you, you'll have a ride with us. And I told Mitch, you know, I shook his hand. Mitch has been just so amazing to me. And I, I have so much respect and all the opportunities he's given me. I told him, I said, Mitch, you know, this is the end for me. I, uh, I've accomplished what I've wanted. I've been given a lot of opportunities to try and win the championship. I've won races. I've, you know, I, I need something different in my life, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 30, well, it was, I was 32. I'm 32, you know, and, you know, I, if I want to have a chance to do something on the 450, you know, I, I have to make the move no matter what happens. So, you know, we just continue that. And, you know, it was a little stressful off season. I didn't have the best outdoors. Um, I was a, a little naggy in, in, injury here and there. And, um, you know, I, it was, like I said, a stressful, um, you know, off season because there was no rides. You know, I, I told myself, you know, if I can just get in a good bike, you know, even if it's a privateer bike, you know, let's start from zero. I, I, you know, the 450, you don't have to have that engine, you know, that you're looking for in the 250. You just need to have, you know, good suspension, good sources to be able to set up the bike the way you want it. And I believe, you know, throughout all the years that I've been racing, I believe that I know what I want on my bike and I am confident enough that I'll be able to set it up the way I want it. So, you know, we, I talked to a few guys and there was a few opportunities, but, you know, Team Tether came to me, I think it was uh, at the beginning of October, I was going to go do that Geneva race. And uh, I, Mitch was, um, you know, Mitch decided to give me a shot, like just go ahead and ride, you know, I'll help you to keep you training, keep you in, in shape. And uh, <clears throat> basically, like I said, it, that the Tim Tedder came last minute and I, <clears throat> I didn't have to really uh, think too much about it. You know, I knew that they were going to have factory support from KTM and that to me was all I needed to know. I know KTM is a great motorcycle and if I had access to a few of the factory parts, especially, like I said, the suspension and a little bit of the chassis, I would make this motorcycle work to my liking. So uh, it ended up being the best decision I've made to move in the 450s. I'm, I am so pleased to be with, with Team Tedder, Dakota, Matt, Christine. You know, they're a very humble uh, family. They, they do believe in, in the sport, you know, they wanna help the sport grow. And uh, they were, you know, I'm, I'm blessed enough that they were able to open the, the doors for me to come in as part of their, their team and their family. So uh, it's, it, it was a, an amazing year, definitely. Sometimes it's a blessing in, uh, you know, a blessing in disguise, how things work out and the timing goes. And for you, you, I mean, you've ridden for a lot of different factory teams. And I know from experiences too that not every team really works the way the rider exactly wants to. You might be in a situation where you have things that you don't like, but you're stuck with. With, you know, Team Tatter and Dakota and that that whole crew, was it kind of nice to go somewhere where you had a little bit more freedom? I mean, you were their guy, but they were wanting to work around you. And like you said, you have the experience. You know how to make a bike work the way you want to. Was it good in a way to land somewhere where maybe not everything was like, hey, you're gonna do things our way. It's gonna be like this, where instead they said, Marty, what do you want? Let's, let's build this bike. Let's build it all year. No pressure. Was it kind of good to land in a spot like that where you could kind of build what you wanted yourself? Yeah, it was amazing to be honest with you. I couldn't ask for a better chance. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's, there's WP backing us, there's factory KTM backing us and, you know, Roger, Ian, you know, they, Rick, you know, what Cooper runs is, you know, neck and triple clamps for an example, Acropovic pipe, um, you know, I, if I want to test Pro Circuit, if I want to test FMF, if I want to test um, X strict triple clamps, Pro Circuit triple clamps, I can test whatever I want. I don't have to stick to, you know, how the factory runs it, you know. So it's been, it was awesome. You know, they were very open to try whatever I like, whatever I feel comfortable with. You know, I stuck with Rental because Rental has been part of my career, my whole, you know, my whole career. Um, we I, we tested a couple things that I you know we stuck to some of the factory stuff that I thought it it was really good and you know besides all that I did some adjustments to the chassis that I thought you know benefit my riding 
and WP worked with me and you know we had some settings from the past obviously that definitely helped so the adjustment was very easy I was able to have the bike that I wanted to have you know I was just uh, on a KTM motorcycle a factory support bike under me and I was able to pick and choose and make it the way I wanted to make it so it was a it was a great feeling you know and and to have a you know a family you know they they do this out of their their own pocket to let you you know and trust you um to do these things you know it's it, it's been awesome yeah I, I just said sometimes you land in the right spot when you need to that's what it definitely looks like um i want to talk more about 2020 i want to get into salt lake a couple different things and 2021 the schedule's out now so we'll talk about that but a question i've had for you that i wanted to know personally for a long time this is a great opportunity to ask it you said you came here at 15 on your own. You're, you know, give yourself a shot at this thing. What was your younger years like on, on a 50 and 65 and 85? I mean, obviously you're very fast. You've been very good at this, but where did you build that as a kid? You know, we have our amateur scene here. What was your youth like that, that kind of helped build you into who you are as a rider that has led to the career you've had? Well, to be honest with you, a lot of people don't think, um, don't really know my, my life. I started when I was, you know, we had some, you know, PWs to ride around. We never got to a racetrack or a track. We just rode around our yard a little bit. But everything really started when I was 11. And for me, you know, and my parents, you know, we never, I mean, a lot of people say, you know, Ecuador is a third world country, which it is, you know, the, the you know, it's not easy over there. The, you know, the economy is tough. The tracks are terrible. You know, the motorcycles are super expensive. I was blessed enough that my, my dad was able to even uh, was able to buy me a motorcycle. So at 11 year, years old, I started kind of, you know, as a, I would say a weekend warrior. That's what we call it here. Just kind of riding for me. It was more important to play soccer. You know, soccer was, I was the captain on, on the soccer, on my school. And, you know, we had weekends that, we, you know, play soccer and all that. Sometimes we, we went and rode motorcycles, but I think I, you know, obviously it's hard for me to remember, but I started getting good, winning some local races, some national championships in Ecuador. Everything is, you got to remember, we're talking about Ecuador, very small country. So just think about it very small, you know, but, uh, you know, just, I was kind of getting better, you know, and my dad must've seen something in me to where we started going into Latin American championships, you know? I did it on a 85. I won five Latin American championships. And my dad was like, let's go to a world championship, a world cup in Spain. And I'm like, I mean, this is an opportunity of my lifetime. I don't know how good I am. You know, I did win the Latin American championship, but I haven't, you know, South America and Latin America, we, I mean, you, you're just kind of pretty much stuck in this bubble. You don't know what's going on, what's going on in the, you know, in the world. I've, I've of course followed, the Supercross here in America and the outdoor series, <clears throat> but ended up meeting Davey Millsaps there and Colleen Millsaps. And they, they were very nice to me and they invited me to come spend some time here before they op open MTF, the facility. So I came here for two weeks. Like I said, it was, it was only two weeks came back and my parents were all about me finishing school. Uh, I think it's 11th grade. My, the, you know, when I was, 14 almost turning 15 Colleen emailed my my family saying hey we're opening the facility there's an opportunity for Martine to come you know send them come here for a year and my you know my mom and dad are like okay let's give them the opportunity to go there for a year as an like an exchange student kind of let them go for a year see what happens just let them have fun learn English my English was terrible so learn English ride motorcycles and you know do some of the amateur nationals came here at the end of 2003 october 31st of 2003 um you know didn't know anything about classes colleen's like you gotta ride the b class uh mini o's and i kind of i got hurt a little bit so i wasn't able to do mini o's then i you know we did the lake whitney Mosier, las vegas and all that kind of stuff and loretta's you know, long story short, I ended up doing the, you know, Suzuki, Cole Gress kind of helped me with a couple bikes. I had two bikes here that la had to last me the whole year. I was my own mechanic, you know. My dad didn't didn't have the money to, you know, have a motorhome here. I was staying 
um, at Colleen's house, you know, under her own roof. They were feeding me. I was pretty much a, another member of the family, learning everything with Davey, Brian Johnson, you know, just kind of watching. And then um, 2004 and then 2005, I, you know, they moved me to the A class because I got second at Loretta's. And then, man, it, it, it was such a short amateur career. Um, you know, if, if I could think, if I could do things differently, I would like to have a little more experience. You know, I came <laughs> here from such a small country to do the B, the A, and then boom, I'm like, I'm going pro. It's like ridiculous, you know? And I got third that year at Loretta's on the A in pro sport. And then I was lucky enough that Bobby Reagan from Star Racing called me. He's like, Hey, we're going to give you a shot. <laughs> So I was like, amazing. This is like, I cannot believe this is happening to me. I'm a small kid from Ecuador, you know? And, uh, wow. Second race came and I got third. I, I podium, you know, in Atlanta and, you know, literally that, you know, I just, I'm never gonna forget that night. You know, I'm, I have a big fro and, you know, I, I podium, Davey was winning. He <laughs> fell and, and I was in second for like, two laps to go and I can see Davey coming. I'm like, dude, just pass me. I'll get third. I don't care. Um, ended up getting third and a lot of open, a lot of doors opened up for me after that, you know, and then just kind of my career started. Then, you know, I, I, I raced for, you know, Rebel KTM for a, a lot of years. Then I switched manufacturers here and there. And, you know, like I said, it, it's taken me a while to get used to this whole thing. And, you know, it, 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 it took me a lot of years to win a race. You know, I, I podium a couple times and, you know, I was fast enough that I was, you know, a lot of the team managers and team owners believed in me and they gave me the, you know, the opportunity. And I feel like I, I, I've done good to, you know, representing them. I, I really have been a hard work, working kid, you know, my whole life. I've, I've really tried my hardest every single year. Um, you know, there's, there's been tough races, um, good races, good years, bad years, but I've always, you know, been a positive guy. Um, and I, I've been, you know, I've been, I've, I've tried to make the best out of the situation. Um, I'll tell you 2014, 2013 or 14, I think it was, that was, that year really changed my life. Um. You know, I, I was racing Adam. It was his rookie year. I was, you know, I was a little, I was experienced. Um, I had the opportunity to win the championship. And yeah, those two, two rounds to go that, you know, that practice tr um, crashed where my chain snapped. That, that changed my, my, my point of view things. You know, it, it really kind of, it kind of traumatized me a little bit in the head. It took me a while to come out of that, that hole. You know, I was, it was the trust issues with the bike. You know, I, I didn't feel comfortable riding. Uh, you know, I didn't have that much trust in on the bike, on any kind of bike, you know, on myself. So I, I, I definitely, it definitely took me a while to get out of that, but I was able to, and, you know, just kind of continue my career and just put, you know, put that in the past. It happens, you know, it just, at the end of the day, you know, it could have happened to anybody and it happened to me that day. And, you know, I, 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 I can still feel it like it was yesterday. So, uh, it is what it is, man. I, I, I wouldn't change anything. My whole career has been amazing. I'm so grateful for every team manager, every boss that I've had the opportunities they, they have given me. Um, I just, I, I just can't, you know, sometimes I, I look back and I just, I can't believe, you know, what I've had to do to be here. And I am, I'm blessed that I've been welcome here in America to race, you know, against the best in the world. And just to be in this, in this position to me, it's just, I'm, I'm never going to forget, you know? Yeah. Uh, I just, I mean, I'm, I kind of got goosebumps a little bit there when you're coming to the U S for a one year trial and, and then it takes off like it has. And now here we are talking about like your career, like you said, you're 32 years old now. And it's like, Dang, that had to have been gnarly thinking back to that year where they gave you a chance to be, like they said, a foreign exchange student. But, hey, you're going to do dirt biking instead. So I, that's pretty rad. Um, I, something that you kind of brought up was MTF, Millsaps, riding there. I follow you on Instagram. I follow them on Instagram. 
Martin, I know you're a good starter, but I watched a video the other day of you wheeling over the gate. You you dang near looped out. Look, you're a good starter, but you can't cheat and wheelie over the gate next year. Is that what you're trying to work on or something? Because it looked like you're just trying a new technique with the starts, and I don't think it's legal. I just want to say. It's definitely not legal. To be, it was it was actually pretty funny. Uh, it was the last start. I was actually we were doing. I was lining up against some of the amateurs, but they separated us on four fifties and two fifties. So Jordan Smith was on the first gate, and they they did their last start. So I pulled up to the to the gate, and he's like, "Hey, dude, this is the last start. You should try and jump it." And I'm like, "Dude, I don't. I, I I've never jumped the gate. You know, like especially we're on, we're on the graded starts. So yeah. I'm like, dude, I you know I don't know how to jump this thing. So <laughs> long story short, I I launched the thing and. I wasn't expecting, I thought it was going to like launch and then just kind of wheel spin. And I launched and it hooked up and I literally almost looped out. I saved it. It was pretty funny. It was a good uh, save. It was, you almost put it down. You had it 10 10 o'clock. Let's just say 10 Yeah, I had it 10 (laughs) o'clock. But hey, I I saved it and somebody had it on video. So it was perfect. And I wasn't ashamed of it. I put it on my Instagram. I'm like, hey, a lot of people, um, you know, they, they laughed and they enjoyed it. That's for sure. How you probably can't count and you probably don't know, but how many whole shot awards have you gotten? Like there's gotta be a lot through the years, man. You're a good starter. I would say heat race wins and whole shot awards. You probably stacked up quite a few of those things. I know, man. I, you know, a lot of people give me, you know, even joking around Ricky, you know, he, before I started training at, at the goat farm, he, he used to call me out on TV. He is the 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 whole show, uh, hero. I'm like Ricky. You know, I mean, you've raced. It's hard to win them things, and you know, I you know my starts have helped me, and you know, I I, I you know I've at least I'm trying to win something, you know, and yeah. um you know if heat races pay decent, and you know if I can get a little extra money here and there, why not? But I think 2007 was my best year. Um, you know, with the starts when. I remember when Villapoto and Townley were battling for the um, the championship on the pro circuit bikes. I was on Rebel KTM and our or Rebel KTM, our bike was a rocket ship. And I literally, I think I had seven whole shots. I I had the most whole shots out of you know the whole class combined um, that year, and it was it was amazing. But I practice, you know, I practice a lot of starts. Um, you know, that's one of the things that Colleen taught me. It's just, if you can stay, if you can, you know, if you can start up front, you can learn that pace. And I mean, you, I mean, you've raced before, you know, like when, if you're starting top five, it's a good spot. If you're starting 15th, it's, it's literally a battle, you know, like you're, you got to deal with people trying to pass you and like, you can't see the track very well. There's a lot of ruts. There's a lot of chances that you're taking. Somebody in front of you can make a mistake and you can crash without. It happens so easily. And, you know, when you start up front, you're basically, you're minimizing all that risk, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's up to you to either hold it up or, you know, you can go backwards a little bit. But like I said, you, you're minimizing the risk of somebody in front of you crashing or cross rutting or jumping on you and all that. So, it's a huge benefit. All right. Well, based on your Instagram video, it looks like you're trying to go 17 for 17 next year because uh, <laughs> I don't think it's legal, though. But you're, you don't need it. You're a good starter either way. Uh, one thing I want to ask, too, um, you talk about home and how much different it was growing up as a kid. Do you, uh, do you get to go back there often? Uh, how often do you get to go home? And, I mean, I'm sure this year is – I mean, you can fill me in on it, but I would assume this year has been weird with everything. Um, do you get to go home often? Um, no, not really. I try about once a year, uh, if that, you know, and this year is impossible. I mean, it's just impossible. So um, uh, I was thinking about going, you know, we were, I was waiting for the, you know, announcement for Supercross. The speculations were saying it could maybe start at the end of January, maybe in March, you know. And then I was like, you know, if they start a little late, I'm going to try and go to Ecuador for Christmas because, you know, I have a newborn. He's, a, he's about 14, almost 14 months. So I want my, you know, some of my, my grandparents, you know, they, they're getting older. 
and I would like for them to meet my son, you know? So I was going to try and do that, but you know, with this COVID thing and now the elections, it's just, it's just a risk. It's, it's just too, too much, you know, going on. And I'm honestly, honestly don't know when I'll go. Um, probably when this whole COVID thing, um, you know, kind of passes, we're thinking about going for Christmas, but you know, there's so many regulations. I don't know if they're going to shut the borders. I don't know if I got a quarantine, you know, traveling internationally. So I don't know. We'll see, um, see what happens. If, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've already had some issues with that in the past. <laughs> right? Getting stuck somewhere and not being able to make it back. You're not, you don't want to play with those games no more, right? Not again. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to play with that stuff. I mean, people know <laughs> that what happened to me with immigration and it's no joke. And now if, you know, if I, let's say if I decide to go to Ecuador for, if I don't, if I don't talk to the embassies, if I decide to go to Ecuador for Christmas, for an example, and I go there and they made me quarantine for 14 days. And then when I come back, I can't leave because I got a quarantine for 14 days. Then I'm missing the season. So it's just like, right. <clears throat> it, it, I have to, you know, I got to play it smart. I got to see what it's going to be beneficial, if it's going to be safe enough to do it. And then, uh, then, you know, make a decision from then. How's, uh, how's dad life? 14 months. I say, I got a 10 year old and a seven year old. So I'm past all that. They do their own thing. We hang out. We actually talk, like communicate. But I remember back, whoo, the first year is tough, man. How, how, how you hanging in there? I even know the other night you were on dad duty, like having to do it all. You, uh, you doing all right? You're asking me how is dad life? I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm struggling with a dad bod. <laughs> oh, oh, dude. It's, it's, it's actually, um, you know, when he was born and, you know, all this stressful and gosh, not, you know, not being able to sleep and all that, the off season kind of after Utah kind of got the best of me a little bit. I, I, I gained a couple pounds that a little couple <laughs> extra pounds that I, I'm not too proud about, but, you know, I, I started, you know, my off season training now trying to get back to where I need to be. Um, but it's been amazing. I mean, he's, just seeing him grow, you know, it's, it's hard to explain when, you know, when you're a dad and you're telling me this is what's going to happen and they grow so fast, you don't realize it until you're actually a dad. And, you know, seeing him develop, you know, when he was a baby and just feeding him and changing the diapers and, and the learning, now he's getting so much fun. I mean, he's got a cute personality. Um, I love him. I love coming home to see him. He now, obviously he's so, so affectionate. He hugs me. He gives, he gives me lots of kisses. You know, when he sees me, he smiles and you know, that to me is just, it makes my day no matter what, how my day went, just every time I come home and he sees me, he runs after me and he smiles and it's just, it's the cutest thing. So, um, I wouldn't change it for anything. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that he's healthy. I'm blessed that he's, you know, he's, th that I'm, I was able to spend the summer with him and, and learn from him. I really hope he doesn't like motorcycles, <laughs> even, he, even though he's, he's come to the track and he, he loves it. He loves, you know, I take him on my pit bike around here on the neighborhood and he loves, loves it. But you know, this, this sport is brutal. And I, if I could, if I could choose something, it would be another kind of sport, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wish I could say the same. Mine's 10 and he races full time and he's in. D -d -d just you let him ride one time, it's over. That's, that's it. One ride, it's all he's going to want to do. But I will say this too. You know the feeling that when you come home and he wants to see you and he's all fired up? That will eventually go away. My kids usually, when I come to the door, they come running, Daddy, they run. And I, it's got to be this year, or maybe end of last year. I started coming home. I'd run, open the door, and they're on the couch, and they're like, "Hey, Dad." And I'm like, "What Man, happened? Don't tell like, me what this. happened?" Yeah. And it's because now they're they're grown up and they're doing their thing, and Dad's just Dad now. So take it in every day because there will be a day when you come in and he'll be like, "Sup, Dad?" And you'll be like, "Man, what happened?" So take it take it all in right now. I'm going to do that. I've heard a couple of people 
told me that, you know, that when they're young, they're sweet. When, you know, once they start getting older, they, you know, you know, they start, you know, worrying about watching TV. And when you come in, they're like, uh, not really, but I'm definitely taking it all in. I'm, uh, I'm trying to enjoy as much as possible right now. Obviously, uh, you know, the COVID thing, I was able to spend a lot of time with him, you know, here at home. And, uh, you know, just that to me, this summer has been amazing. You know, I, I was able to, like I said, I was able to let my, my body heal. I'm, you know, I'm 30, I'm 33 now. And a lot of people don't realize how, how gnarly this sport is on your body. And, you know, I was just being able to do super cross and taking the summer off at this kind of age. I've never felt so good right now. You know, like my body, <laughs> my, my body feels really good. I, I'm re, re, uh, I'm pretty much, I, I feel like I've, I've, I've got a couple of years back from, you know, from, from, from taking the summer off. So um, I'm pretty pumped that I made that decision. Uh, super only just focusing on that on the summer, just let my body heal, let my body rest. And now we just kind of, get fired up again and, and put in a good couple months, you know, to get ready and just get back into, into the swing of things for sure. So a couple things, um, 13th in points last year. Again, there was a couple races where you lost a lot of points, but there was a couple races where you're up there in the front. I mean, Atlanta is the one that stands out to me big time. That was an awesome ride. Uh, you seem to always be good in Atlanta. I don't know if it's just from, the time in Georgia, but God, you are Atlanta killer, man, always. But now we look at the schedule that just came out. We got these like kind of mini bubbles like Salt Lake. We're going to do three in Houston, two in Indy, three. Um, so with that schedule, also coming off of your second, uh, your first year now, back with the second, uh, second year with the same team, do you like the way everything's kind of settling in now, just that comfort of being with those guys at, at Tedder, uh, Team Tedder again? this schedule with the stadiums that we already know we're going to, does this all kind of fit for you as like, Hey, 13th was good, but I think this combination is going to give me a bump that I need and, and be a top 10 guy throughout the year. And man, maybe podiums, maybe a win. Like I said, you, you showed that you were very close to it. Is this all coming together the way you, uh, you, you think's best for you? I honestly, I did not mind the, the Salt Lake city schedule and I do not mind at all the schedule that, that they have announced the you know the three race bubbles to me is i think it's it's beneficial you know it's just less traveling less taxing on your body you know that that you know saturday race we're up until gosh 11 sometimes 12 then three four in the morning you're waking up to travel back home and you're trying to recover on sunday well now you're able to sleep in good you have a good rest day you you know we have equipment we can travel with our bicycles uh, you know it's high intensity racing. So, you know, we're not required to be really put in a lot of training in between, you know, especially on the motorcycle. It's just more for me about recovery. And that's what I did in Salt Lake City. And it worked out really good. You know, maybe loosen up, go to a motocross track just to practice some stars, just to stay sharp. Um, but yeah, for me, it was very tough at the beginning. You know, you're like, that's just a 450. It can't, it can't be that hard. You know, I'm, 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 I'm able to three in everything or four now, like you can quad things so easily. I have the power, but let me tell you the first half of the season, I struggle with the starts for an example. It's just got so much power. You gotta be very smooth, smooth throttle control, the aggression in the rhythm sections, you know, like, yes, I can go three, 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 no problem. But how can I go three, three, three and shave half a second, you know, because that's what all the guys at front are doing. They're not just going three, 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 because everybody does that, you know? Everybody is jumping the same rhythm sections. The manufacturers, all the bikes are at another level now. Is how can I shave this one one hundredth of a second in the rhythm section? So to me, it was, you know, I gosh, I crashed so many times that my 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 starts were very inconsistent. I was so aggressive, you know, I was like, oh, my, the bike was throwing me backwards. I was just like overriding the bike. So, you know, I think halfway through the, the season after Daytona, things started kind of clicking for me. I was able to ride the bike a little more smoothly. I didn't, to be honest with you, I did not test at all suspension and chassis much after I, you know, rode the bike for a couple, uh, you know, for the first time. For me, it was just like, how do I get used to this engine, you know, like, how can I be able to be efficient 
and be fast, but be in control. And, uh, you know, I kind of got the hang of it. I've, I, I feel like, believe it or not, obviously, I, I'm, I, I don't consider me a rookie. I have a lot of experience yet racing, but now having that first year under my belt, you know, approaching this next season, you know, the way I'm riding right now, more confident, more comfortable on the motorcycle. I know the limits of it. I know how it's going to react a little more. So just that mentally for me, it's been, it's been a huge improvement. So looking at the schedule, you know, we're going to run into, you know, we know Houston is going to be soft and we know, you know, Phoenix is going to be hard pack and long track. So I, I'm just very excited. I, I want to be consistent up the start. I know that, you know, the top guys are going to be incredibly fast. And I, I, I think I know that I know, I think I know what I need to do. Um, I know what the pace is going to be like, but in this 450 class, it's not just really about the pace at the beginning. It's just, you know, if you want to stay up there in the top 10, you have to, you have to push the 20, the 25, 30 laps, you know, it's, uh, you have a, a freight train behind you. And, you know, I, I feel like in the 250 class, just because it's divided in two, two coasts, you have five or six guys that, you know, if you, if you do get a little tired, you can salvage a top five, you know, maybe fourth. Gosh, if you get tired on the 450, you get, you get passed by everybody. you you realize you like blink your eyes, you're in 15th, you know? So, um, I know the fitness that I need to be, that I need to have to be able to be up there. And, you know, I, I think uh, with that extra year under my belt, I'll be able to, to be a little more aggressive with the bike. And, and, uh, and you know, I, I have that whole year that I learned. We have a, a base setting that, that I raced with last year. So I feel like we're a, st a step ahead. So I'm pretty pumped about it. Um, you know, I'm pumped to go racing again. And, it's, it's such a challenge to, it's such a privilege to be racing all these champions, you know, for me, it's, it's amazing to be lining up against, gosh, I don't, I mean, there's like 10 champions on the, in the class. It's, just, it's insane. It's, 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 to me, it's, it's pointless to really even think about it because there's so many, <laughs> there's so many good guys, you know, it's, uh, you can't underestimate anybody. You know how in the 250 class, it splits east and west. So you're always wondering, like, who's going to end up on my coast? Like, who are mm – -hmm. throw that out the window in the 450. There is literally, like you said, that I think round one, there's going to be 20 guys in the gate that have probably gotten a podium at some point in their career. It's that insane. So to your point, you, you can't even, like – you can't even think about it. You just got to get a start and just go because you could get fourth – or 15th and maybe even ride the same it's that competitive obviously your starts help you get up there a lot more um i, I want to talk about salt lake real quickly you were really fast there you had good results there speed was no question but from what i understand there was someone maybe even a little faster than you there uh a guy named juan pablo is, uh, does he ring a, does he ring a bell I, I heard he was pretty fast in salt lake <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. I, I, <laughs> that's funny um Salt Lake was good you know I I think you know having Dakota there and um you know it's just we we really brought it down to old school you know we rented a house uh Dakota rented a house for us we were all the mechanics were there so the atmosphere was very 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 comfortable and we just made the best out of it you know and I think uh I think I had a really good plan of 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 my recovering you know throughout there's the elevation I knew how to handle the elevation because I was born in elevation. And, um, you know, I, I felt very comfortable when it came to that. I knew that for me in, in my kind of age, it wasn't really about, you know, doing a lot of base rides or interval training or a lot of weight lifting. It's just about recovering in between races. And I think it, it really benefit me. And I think I, if I could change, I wouldn't change anything. We had a blast. Mountain biking was insane there. We, we, uh, you know, and, and to be honest with you, Salt Lake City was a great city. They were, they hosted it amazingly. They did for, for the circumstances that we were going through. Um, I don't think it could have been any better. Um, they, I think they did a, a splendid job and <laughs> the weather actually took it like to another level. 
you know, we, the first round was a hundred degrees. Then we, we had a cold, a cold rain. Then we had a rainy day. Then we had a soft, it was just, it was like, they threw everything at us. So um, it was pretty fun. Yeah, overall, I, th I same thing. I thought it was a good trip for being in one place for a long time. I felt like I was living in different places based on the different weeks. I mean, I remember the same thing. It was pouring down rain, mud, and it was hot. So, I mean, my laundry was confused. Like, like I was traveling all over the country. I was in one town. Like, it was so confusing. Uh, but it ended up going really good. Um, overall, again, 13th on the season. Had some great rides. My last question for you is – how much longer do you want to go and what do you want to accomplish? Again, you've had a good career, a lot of wins, heat race wins, main event wins, 450 now, you're, you made your debut last year. Like you said, I know you, you're a rookie on paper, but I know you had the experience to do the things that you did last year, but I think you're in a good spot now. How much more do you want to do this and what do you want to accomplish? I mean, to be honest with you, I, you know, there's not many years left in, in this career for me. You know, it, it's just it's just my body is just is not going to allow me, you know? And I think that I have, I have really extended this, I would say last year. And, you know, I, I, Matt, you know, we, I, I signed it. I wanted, I wanted Matt to give me a, a two year deal. You know, I was like, you know, if, if I'm not required to do outdoors, I can maybe extend my, my, my body and let my body recover and be able just to focus on outdoors and, and not really hammer my body you know, outdoors is just ri ridiculous, you know, and just focus on Supercross. So, um, you know, if I can get this year, I want to have a solid year. I just, you know, if I could get, you know, if I can get on the box on the, on the 450, you know, this upcoming year at one point, it'll be, you know, I think it being as competitive as it is right now, I think that would be a magnificent ride for me if I was to, to get to that point, you know, and it, it, you're just competing against so many good people. Um, I like to be positive, to be honest with you. I would, I would love to, but also, you know, you're not racing against kids anymore. I'm not racing against kids. I'm racing against the, you know, real deal people and very respectful. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I want to be able to like in Salt Lake city, you know, there's, there was a couple rough rounds but i just want to be able to ride to my full potential you know Wh whatever that ends me at this point in my career i'll be i'll be happy you know and i think salt lake was a great trip for me i think i look back and yeah i had it, my sketchy moments at the beginning of the year but i felt like a some rate some of the races i did race to my what i'm capable what i was capable of doing so to me and my goals is just to be able to stick to that program, be consistent, and just ride, to, uh, ride and race to my what my body's capable of doing. So I think if I can do that, I I'll be able to accomplish great things. And um, that you know that's what it's always been for me, just what it's all about. Right on, Marty. Uh, congratulations again, Rookie of the Year, dude. That's again stacking up some cool stuff on the resume, but. I think you got your eye on that podium. And if, man, if you could pull that off in that 450 class, not, not only just to get one to say you did, but, man, to do it now with the class the way it is, that would be awesome. And, uh, again, I like the package you got, the team. I mean, they're fired up. I know you're fired up. I'm excited to see what you do in 2021. So uh, thanks for joining me on Beyond the Track. And good luck with the off-season program. Get the kid in bed. Get him to sleep so you can get your sleep and uh, get to work. And we'll see you in Houston. Daniel, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And uh, I, was, I was glad I was able to talk to you a little bit tonight. And like I said, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Marty.